everyone. Welcome to another Amazon seller journey session. I know it's been a little while, but we are getting back on track for these sessions because I know you guys really love them. So um, I'm Matt and today I'm joined by Zach of SS University. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, not too bad. How about you? Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm great. Thank you. So Am I correct in saying so? You you are the founder of SS University. Yeah, like yeah. you and you alone put it together. Yeah. So a lot of people thought at first that it was like sort of me and like a group of people. Um, yeah. Because obviously it was kind of like SS University. I think the perception was like it was like a group of people, but yeah, it was literally just me. It just started with I think we were just called SS FBA, or I was just called SS FBA, yeah. and, and then I kind of thought like, okay, because I was at university, I was trying to do Amazon and stuff like that. I thought. Let me actually make a university for Amazon sellers and like people who were similar background to me, people who had similar ambitions or were trying to do it part time. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't have the privilege of just going full time straight away. You know, a lot of yeah. people have responsibilities and maybe they're studying and stuff like that. So I thought, okay, let me make a community where we can have people who are all from sort of similar backgrounds and can relate to each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and that is how we kind of got formed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, yeah. So, tell me a little bit so just on the back of you mentioning about backgrounds and stuff tell us a little bit about uh your background and sort of like uh, a bit about you and sort of like how how you got into amazon and how you sort of like juggled that with uni just give us the breakdown yeah. so, to be honest like since i've been young i've always kind of liked having my own business not the cliche thing but i was like selling stuff at school like it wasn't just sweets yeah. I, I was selling anything like I used to sell like these loon bands, fidget spinners, all of these things. I remember so I was always selling stuff. Yeah, I was always like selling stuff at school, whether it was like match attacks and things like that. So yeah. I always liked like business. Like my, everyone used to like my nan used to always say to me, uh, you're gonna be like Lord Sugar. That was one thing I always used to <laughs> come for. But she always used to call me that like as a joke. But yeah, I did like business, but at the same time, I was actually quite like academically strong. So mm -hmm. I um got did got good grades at GCSE and A level. And I went to go and do law at Bristol University. So I actually did quite well in terms of like school life. I was never sort of like, didn't like school. I actually pretty liked school. Um, I thought I was going to do law because I was quite interested in it. But then what happened was when I went to uni and then I started doing the course and then I started doing work experience. So I was working in the city. I was in Liverpool Street. I was in all these big firms and I was kind of sitting there. I was just like, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. And it wasn't yeah. as feeling as what I thought. And at that time, I was like, okay, cool. I, I was literally just, my friend just told me about Amazon FBA. They're like, yeah, Amazon FBA. And the first thing he said was, like, oh, you can just sell like cocoa butter or something like that. And he's like, yeah, you can make a good bit of money off there. So I just started watching YouTube videos. Literally, like, I didn't really have a clue. Like, I didn't actually, when I started getting a mentor or anything, I just kind of watched YouTube and just ordered my first product. Now, <laughs> when I ordered my first stuff, again, I did so many things horribly wrong, but I learned from that. Yeah. Yeah, basically, I just kind of went for it. I thought, okay, cool. I've not really got much to lose here. I had a bit of money spare. I had about 300, 400 pounds from my student finance that I thought, yeah, let me just chuck it into this and, and see what happens. And, and yeah, it kind of just took off from there. Um, the first year was a bit up and down because, again, I was kind of doing it part time. I didn't actually, if I'm honest, and this is why I say to people who start, don't worry if in the first year you don't get amazing results. You know, I was doing it part-time and I, I was doing like good sales, but then I'd take money out. I would yeah. kind of slack for a month because I was busy with exams or something. I, it wasn't like on the top of my priority list. And often if you do treat it like a side hustle, you will get side hustle results. So I accepted the fact that in my first year, because I did treat it really like a side hustle, like just such a side hustle. Like when I'd come home from uni, I'd just pop down to the retail stores and flip some products and it was, yeah, it was a side hustle, but then I decided to, to turn it up a little bit the year after. So have you, have you, so initially, did you try retail arbitrage and then did you yeah. move from that? So literally like what happened, my journey was really weird. I think in my first year, I basically tried everything. So I yeah. started with, I started with online arbitrage because I was at uni, so I couldn't really do retail because I, yeah, I, yeah. I was in Bristol. So Bristol, if you know Bristol, is pretty much like quite a small town and then like anywhere else the big shops are just far away and I didn't have a car so I was doing retail arbitrage and I was finding some good products like good margins good ROIs um, but then yeah like I said then obviously they would die for a bit you know that's just how Amazon works and yeah so I was doing online at Bristol then when I got, went, came home I was doing retail 
But then because of like certain connections, I, I actually knew someone who owned a, a wholesale company. So I ended up just within my third or fourth month, just doing like a first wholesale order. And it was yeah. actually pretty decent. I, I got decent amount of sales and stuff like that. And yeah, I kind of just tried everything in my first year, a bit of wholesale, a bit of a hurry, a bit of OA. And I was just learning because I, I didn't have any mentor. I wasn't part of any communities. I was kind of just figuring out by myself which yeah. I kind of wish I was in. I kind of wish I was in one of them because that would have helped, helped me kind of keep accountable, keep going, see the bigger picture because I never really saw outside of like mm -hmm. thinking that maybe three to 5K sales a month was actually good. It was yeah. until after when I started networking a bit more and speaking to sort of the bigger fish that I realized, okay, cool, there's a lot of potential here. Yeah. And I, I knew all, all the skills and everything, it was just capital that I was just missing because mm -hmm. like I said, I was treating it like a side hustle. I wasn't investing a lot of money, uh, et cetera. Yeah. And how important uh, would you say networking is? Like, say for your sort of like newish seller out there who's just sort of like going it alone right now, like how important would you say network? It's very, very important. So the way I actually scaled very well was that I had a, almost like someone who was basically like a, a business partner. Now, I didn't have a business partner, um, but we kind of worked together on things. So if I was lacking in some areas, they would kind of remind me of certain things. If they were checking out these brands, these stores, these places. They would kind of let me know in on that. They yeah. might have a different interpretation on certain products, which is always good to hear. So that's why now, like when I have this community and things like that, I really stress having like an accountability partner. Like mm -hmm. in terms of network, it's very important as well to see those bigger than you to have goals. But sometimes you need someone who's in the same position as you and someone who's growing with you. Mm -hmm. It's hard for someone to come in and kind of be with me and try and like work with me because obviously I'm, at much of a bigger level than a beginner now so if you can be a beginner and have another beginner alongside you who's got similar ambitions similar goals growing together is an even better journey and you keep each other accountable and you also create good relationships there as well so that's what i think is very important and that's why i set up the whole community i really want there to be people where you've got almost like a friend that you're making and you yeah. grow together and then you've also got those people a bit above you who you look up to and you think okay they're doing this that is what i'm working towards and then in that way you keep yourself going you keep yourself sort of involved in the business a little bit more mm -hmm. so if, if you could go back and like do it all again would you say that getting involved with like the networking side of stuff like would you say you'd have done that a lot sooner or would yeah. you say there's something else that you like might have done I so, think it's definitely I would have like changed. joined. I think if I joined the community a lot earlier, I would have seen more of the potential earlier. I think I saw yeah. the potential quite late because yeah. one, I kind of treated it, like I said, like as a bit of a side hustle. And I didn't take it as seriously as I should have. Um, yeah. But that also comes from like your situation as well. Now, a lot of people, if you're comfortable, if I'm honest, if you're kind of comfortable and you don't really need it to work, often people kind of just leave it as a side hustle because it can really be a side hustle. But yeah, yeah. it was only until I kind of really needed it to work that I really kind of did everything in my power to make it work. And then that was when, yeah, I looked for the community. I looked for an additional mentor. I looked for that network. So I would say that if you're really, really serious about it, you do need those things like a, like a good community, a mentor, and like a, someone on the same level as you that you can grow with and, and a good mm -hmm. network. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Like, uh especially since like amazon and and this sort of like line of work like a lot of what you do is ju it's just like you and your best friend is is your is your laptop or your phone or whatever right. it is that you're using to do it so like networking whether it's in person or you know just joining a group i think that's like really important i would say that's one of like the most important parts yeah, yeah i think so too, um yeah. and so uh earlier you mentioned that you'd made like a a bunch of mistakes but you'd learn from them and like yeah. I, I take my hat off to you for that because uh like usually like a, a few mistakes and uh, like a lot of people just sort of go no it's not for me like I, I give up but like obviously you've you've powered through and you are where you are now yeah. can you just sort of like give us an example of um just sort of like any of like the the most sort of like memorable sort of like mistake or mistakes that that you made and sort of like how you people, overcame yeah, people generally just laugh at me now because they were so stupid when I think about it. like one was like I think I ordered like, you know, obviously you meant to get ungated and stuff like that. I just didn't yeah, yeah. understand that. So I would just order products and it would say like apply to sell. Mm -hmm. And I would just send a picture of like the order confirmation and then be like, why is it not working? So that was just one, like the, the ungating. I just had no clue on that. The second one was also um, like the company. I didn't even set up a company to start off with. So I was wondering why it was taking so long to even set up on Amazon. They were restricting me on all these things. I just didn't even know that. 
that that was just another big mistake that I made. Some other things, yeah, those were like the two most memorable ones at the start where I literally just was just buying products and then I would get them and then I just couldn't sell them. And I was like, okay, well, this is a bit dumb. Now, one a few mistakes that I did make was kind of like selling products that were very similar to the same product. And I wouldn't recommend this. And I did make quite a bit of good money on those types of products where there's like that gray area mm -hmm. um, where it's like pretty much the same product. It's not like inauthentic or anything, but it was maybe like a, a bigger size or something. And I did that. So you just have to be careful with those things as well. And yeah, those were kind of like the biggest mistakes that I made really. Like apart from those kind of early on, like the really early on mistakes, like in the first month kind of helped me to think, okay, cool, this is serious. I need to actually like kind of know what I'm doing now and then start to just watch as much YouTube as I could. I was never actually on TikTok, to be honest. Like there wasn't a lot of TikTok people out there at the time. I feel like now it's quite, there's quite a lot. I think before when I started in 2022, there wasn't really a lot out there so you had to kind of dig a little bit and uh, there were a few like people who were very very helpful on youtube and kind of went into detail almost which was good so obviously uh you know making mistakes is just part of it like every everyone does it like yeah even even those that you see where the like they've got the amazon business to a point where they work for like an hour and the rest of the time they spend it on holiday but yeah. like even even people like that at the start they've made like Definitely. loads of mistakes and I, that's really like the only way that you learn um yeah. Yeah. and so i'm assuming that the, like these are the sorts of things that people can help each other out with in the community that you've built is it yeah yeah definitely yeah. i think what i try and do as well is i think one problem now with a lot of people who start amazon is that the self-accountability aspect is completely lost so obviously when you get a mentor for example you, you join a group you do obviously expect to not make the same mistakes, which is which is okay because there's you miss out on all of that based on what you're paying. Yeah. So you you pay a fee and then you miss out on a load of mistakes that you would have made by yourself. Obviously, the problem with that becomes when you have over-reliance. So sometimes I feel like if you kind of give your student sort of way too much um disconnect between the amount they're putting in and kind of what they expect from you that causes yeah. issues especially with amazon i feel like if you're kind of being been spoon fed a little bit with amazon it yeah. just won't work because there's there's so many different levels and there's so many different challenges and yeah. if you can't yourself uh, manage it on your on your own after you've learned of course you have to learn first and feel um, sort of safe at the beginning feel a bit protected yeah. but you kind of need to fly on your own after yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what i always encourage like of course at the start you want to you want to feel protected, you want to have your support, but you need to start then kind of going off on your own and building your business based on everything that you've learned um, and then start to put your own spin on it as well. You know, yeah, when yeah. I did sort of learned about wholesale, I didn't stick with the strategy that I was taught. I kind of used that and then put in the time and then develop my own kind of strategy. Yeah. So I'd say, yeah, with, with students, it's, it's good for them to have someone who's going to be there for them to support them through silly mistakes and kind of reassure them at the start but i definitely think it's important that yeah. they still remain accountable for the amount of time that they're putting in and what they can expect because yeah i see too many people kind of jump in now and kind of look for the lead group look for the mentor put in minimal work and then kind of are like oh why is it not working it's just like you need to put in a lot more time the mentor only reassures you and teaches you everything and helps you avoid mistakes However, it is up to you in the end of the day to then apply what you've been taught, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. We're not magicians. We're not all magicians. We'll <laughs> show you everything and then it's up to you, okay, to actually go and give it a go. And then if you kind of just give up early on it, because if you think about it, what we're teaching is things that we've learned for over one to two years and we've applied for over one to two years. So mm -hmm. obviously as a beginner, when you start applying it, within month one, you will see some results, but you're not going to see the results that we have now in a month. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer as well in like like sure like go and uh, down like down the line like when it just makes sense to like automate functions of your business like get something for data analysis you know if, if you want to cut down on your sourcing time because you've got other stuff to do you know jo join a leads group or get yeah. some stuff to help you yeah. with something yeah. but i think that at the start it's really good to so sort of like develop those skills raw and just sort of like do, yeah. do agree, yeah. to know what it's like yeah Try, like like just straight a manual sourcing without mm -hmm. the aid of something just so that way you know and yeah. then sort of like implement these things into your business so i think having that like the the raw skills like base level is like really important and then yeah, yeah. Now, that's a good way yeah, of putting it, it. Well, like that that raw base skill level first of like 
kind of foundations you've built based on your own resilience and your own sort of intention and purpose. Yeah, yeah. Do that groundwork to then think, okay, cool. I just need a mentor now who's just going to push me that extra level, and boom, then that, then your your kind of your equity curve, whatever you call it, will increase more dramatically than if you kind of are a beginner and you haven't even kind of given it a go straight away. I kind of always recommend as a beginner, right, watch a few YouTube videos, watch a few TikToks, start to give it a go, set up that account, maybe try a bit of sourcing. Obviously, if then if you're struggling, then it's very important. Okay, cool. You can get a mentor to speed things up, but try and kind of like give things a go a little bit first and then and then go for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, like when you're like sourcing, is there certain techniques that you use that you would sort of like recommend? Oh, hey, you like try this. Like, for example, yeah. like you might have tried like just straight manual sourcing, but maybe that was a bit. Oh, so maybe you tried like some reverse sourcing or storefront stalking or things like that. Have you, have you developed your own? Yeah. So, so the, you I, I don't do online arbitrage as much anymore, but now it's Christmas. So from 1st October, I will. So I've just been sort of practicing again myself because look, yeah. I haven't done it in a while, so I'm a bit rusty. So I've been practicing again my old methods, seeing if I need to adapt anything. And what I found is manual sourcing is really important because manual sourcing is what you do anyway. Whether you do reverse sourcing, you still have to manually source the items. So yeah, you yeah, need exactly. to know how to manually source. That's that's like the foundation. Now, in terms of manual sourcing, you just need to go to the right areas. There's no point you going onto boots and then going into dead areas like. I don't know, some perfumes that are just not on offer, you know, it's rarely you're going to find anything. So you just need to attack one, where the demand is and two, where the offers are on. Yeah. So the way I kind of do it with my community is the leads that are sent in. And this is kind of how I did quite well was I would join these free communities and have a look at their leads. I wouldn't buy the lead, but I'd go onto the website of the lead that they're sending, the brands that they're sending, and then I would source through that. So that's one method. Then obviously on the leads go through the storefronts of the people on the leads because if it's a good lead then the people on the storefronts with a certain amount of reviews you don't want to go over um etc will have good storefronts and likely have good products and then what do you do keep a note of those storefronts keep a note of those websites and that's what people end up just not doing they'll go through stuff and there's actually a lot of gold there and then they'll kind of do it once and not go back Mm -hmm. and that's how you get replenishable products and get longevity on an object if you get a good storefront you store it in a, in a google sheet storefront if you find a good website that has good deals you store it in a in a place where you can go back and revisit that yeah. so i'll do sort of those two that manual and that storefront using sort of leads or just using my own intuitiveness and then reverse keeper i'll do for a certain criteria so if i want to look for a sort of higher ticket items so anything above 50 60 pound then i'll do reverse keeper because i can sort of refine the criteria a lot more Mm -hmm. Um, but when i started and i was doing online arbitrage i was just using my brain like i generally this this was really weird maybe it doesn't work anymore it did it did actually work again to be fair it does work um i remember it was summer and it was like april 2023 and this was when I was about to go into uni exams or I just finished uni exams and I needed some money because I was like, okay, well, I need more capital now for my Amazon business. And I hadn't touched it in a while. So I was like, okay, cool, it's summer. What's going to do well, right? Sunscreens and things like that. So I basically just typed up top 10 best sunscreen or summer products on Amazon. And they came up with the brands. I just went through and manually sourced those brands, came across one product that was like a scalp oil. It would literally had like two sellers on it. I ended up dominating it. We were selling like a thousand times a month by the time it actually picked up. The profit mm-hmm. with ROI was like 150% and it was just mad. And like that was a quick flip from like 300 pounds to like 2000 pounds in the space of like basically two months. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, that is possible if you just use your brain a little bit sometimes. Um, and I wish, the one thing I wish is at that time, I invested more capital into it. I just, I, I didn't have a job. I didn't have an overdrive. I didn't have credit cards. So I couldn't really get more in and that is one thing I kind of wish, but yeah, using your brain is very important as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to. <laughs> yeah. It, Otherwise, it, it, everyone it? thinks the same. And then you're obviously going to struggle to find products if you're looking where everyone's looking. It sounds cliche, but, you know, a lot of people generally think that they're sourcing well, but they're going on to where everyone else is going. They're not actually thinking outside the box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And so obviously you're you're now finished with uni, is that right? Um, no, so I actually took a year out to focus oh, I see. on business a lot more. Yeah, so uh, I was going supposed to be going into my third year, but I realized that the business was scaling quite a lot. And again, like last year where I committed more money, this year I wanted to commit more time. And I thought, okay, cool. Now this year I've seen really good results. I want to commit more time. I also want to commit more money and it should have a compound effect, to be honest, mm-hmm. and just give it my all really. And 
yeah try and sort of build a sustainable business from from now essentially yeah well it seems like you're doing like a, a really good job so yeah um, I'm trying yeah yeah and so um sort of like to, uh just for anyone that's interested in in your uh community how is it that they can get involved uh so to be honest like they can just sort of follow the the tiktok really like the tiktoks where i'll be posting i kind of like to impose a post informative content so anything educational try and actually give value as well so yeah. i always and that's where i like kind of to nurture beginners a little bit so that when they yeah. do want to i don't know if they want to do mentorship or they do want to just sort of join the free discord um, at least they have like some good knowledge on fba as well for just watching my videos really so yeah if, if i would always recommend to join the free community my discord and you can just like send me a dm or you can drop me a follow and like it will be in there I've just started YouTube as well. So I'm posting a lot more nice. content on YouTube. Yeah. So just kind of follow along the different social channels. And then when there are opportunities for mentorship or um, kind of like that more support, I'll kind of release them, et cetera. I try not to just like leave it open for, for everyone. I kind of just sort of, yeah, well, I'll, I'll mention it here. There's a few spaces, et cetera. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, just DM me if you're interested type of thing in whether it's the free community or the mentorship. Perfect um and so for anyone that doesn't know i mean i'm going to put the links to uh zach's channels in the description um but just uh remind me what the the name is for so it's, the tiktok it's uh, s. Instagram, s. Instagram as well. so s dot s university is the same for instagram same for uh, youtube as well so those are the three main ones that i'll be posting on tiktok instagram and youtube and yeah then the discord links are kind of in those channels as well you can kind of yeah. find them yeah, essentially. So again, I'll be I'll be putting those in the description. So if you didn't quite catch that, they will be there. Um, and so just sort of to uh, conclude, I like to do this towards the end of every interview, as everyone knows. And I think everyone kind of like enjoys this bit. It's just sort of like me asking whatever question comes to my head. So um, obviously, like you, between uh, you're studying like law at uni and then also building a business, like, did you find that with all of that going on, like, did you find that in that time, like, even now, do you have, like, much time to, like, unwind? Not really, not at all. Yeah. Like, generally, that last year was, it was very, very isolating, but you need that. Like, I was also running another business on top of that. So I was basically running, and technically, like, the community in, in of itself, a lot of people don't realise how much, like, time and effort like yeah. mentors actually put into their students, especially me. I kind of, like, take a very hands-on approach. Like, I'm... I always check up on on students. I'm always kind of making sure that they're, they're good. I always reply fast. So even that in itself is another business, plus mm. the Amazon business, plus uni, plus another one I had. So like my hours were crazy. Like I'd yeah. be up, I, I wouldn't be, I'm not going to be that person. I'm up at five. I was up at eight because you need sleep. So I would obviously yeah. get rested, but it was almost like eight to 12 PM just work. Um, and yeah, for that year, pretty much I was just not going out at all. Mm. However, now that I've kind of got off uni, I've started to automate things a bit more. Um, in terms of going down the wholesale route and then having a lot more staff for certain things i'm mm. finding i have a lot more time to unwind um but I, I like to do a lot of sports so kind of my unwinding time is where i'm unboxing or i'm in the gym or i'm doing some sort of football or something like that and then yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take some time away with friends on weekends and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah. if you could have i mean this is like really random compared to what you've just sort of like saying if you could have um any superpower but obviously just one what would it be uh, so my why um, i think like one superpower is like you're always awake i think i'd always I'd, I'd, awake yeah i think always being awake because i feel like as much as like always being awake and that doesn't affect you because sleep is very important like, obviously we know like sleep in terms of like your testosterone as well and all of these things sleep is very important muscle repair cognitive mm. and everything like that sleep is important but like if I could cut out that eight hours of sleep and still feel the same way and good, the amount of work I could get done in that time would just yeah. be crazy. And like, I feel like I would just, you know, cause you're sleeping pretty much eight hours of the day. You've got 24 hours, you know, that's like a third of the day gone. So it's like an extra third of the day. That's another business built. That's another six figures made. Like, yeah, that, that's what I, just, that's what I would, I would hope for. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say like, I mean, you already answered it, but I was going to say like, would you still feel the effects of being tired except you just can't sleep? Cause <laughs> yeah. That would that be crazy. Yeah, no, that would be. That would be I'm just feeling. Oh, yeah, no. If you could just feel, sort of not not feel the effects of being tired and just be awake all the time, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah.
yeah. yeah. It's a multivitamin you take in the morning and you're just like, yeah, <laughs> you've just got superpowers now. Yeah. Would you with that, would you would you say that there would still like be unwinding time? Like Oh definitely, yeah. You yeah. need it like without unwinding time, like, and I found this last year you do mentally get a lot very drained and it's hard like i had yeah. to take just like force myself to take breaks and stuff like that i almost felt like a constant headache sometimes yeah. like when you're generally working so hard it is difficult but yeah unwinding time can be unwinding in different ways i found, kind of found that unwinding for me is through like sports like i said and that isn't sort of like unwinding in a bad way where you're going to have negative effects the next day like when I used to sort of my first year of uni when I used to unwind it would have negative effects because I'd be going out for example like two days in a row on the weekend and that's when you're sleeping 4 a.m 5 a.m etc and then that unwinding although it's good in the moment it just has bad effects for the next week and Mm -hmm. you never get that consistency so yeah now if I unwind it'll be like a sports type of thing or like once a week I'll go out but now I'll be back home at like two at latest and kind of get up early the next day and, and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 But, uh, freshers week doesn't seem like the one when. <laughs> no, see, and that's what kind of in my first year, why my Amazon business didn't do as well as it did, because I was still a bit immature. I was still in my like sort of first year of uni. I wasn't taking it as seriously as I should have been. But that's why I kind of can relate to people a bit more because not everyone, like I said, some people need a push or some people need to see that like cool you you have this type of lifestyle now where you're working you're at uni you're you don't see outside of that world and that is what i managed to see outside of and see okay there is a difference here and that's what i want to show people that all of this stuff that you're doing at this moment okay do it but there's going to come a point when you do need to turn things on you do need to take things seriously so learn a skill learn it well give it some time and you will you will succeed and you can kind of escape the trap that you're in a little bit yeah yeah no, that's excellent advice. Um, I just want to say a massive thank you as well for coming on and doing this with yeah, me. No I really, really appreciate it. There's, there's there's lots of sort of like golden nuggets of knowledge in there. So I really, really appreciate it. Um, Likewise. And yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed it as well. If obviously you have any questions, then please feel free to pop them in the comments. But uh, yeah, again, um, as I say, I'll be putting all of Zach's socials in the description so you can go and give him a follow. And I would urge you to do so because his content is awesome. I appreciate once it. again, thank you very much, Zach. Thank you and very much. See you all soon. Take, Take care. care.